Maureen Baker here from the pond, studio on the pond in Massachusetts. And today is, we are in May. It's May 4th and we are going to paint this beautiful tulip and it's called Mayflowers. And I hope you enjoy it. And we're going to do a little bit of mixing and we're going to do a little bit of blending and we're going to have lots and lots of fun. But Mayflowers is uh, just a sign of new beginnings. Spring is the sign of hope. It's a sign of new beginnings. And this beautiful piece is the piece that I'm going to uh, show you how to paint today. So let's get started. I'm going to convert over to my table. And we're going to get started. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a close up on this thing. Isn't that just beautiful? And I'm going to do a little chatting first. Okay. Um, when I was developing this painting, it was really, really bright and it needed to be toned. So one of the things now you're, I'm looking at a red color which is pink, it's alizarin crimson, but it's in the red family. And we're looking at green, okay? And those are really complementary colors, okay? So they vibrate off of each other and they can be really bright. And uh, one of the things that I did choose to do on this painting is to tone down the background just a little bit. And I did that with a neutral color and I chose to use burnt sienna. Um, if you cho do choose to get the kit, then all of this information is in the kit. And if you want to just replay this video again and again, it's going to be on YouTube indefinitely. I never use the word forever anymore because forever is just too big of a commitment. <laughs> but for I have no intention of taking them down. All right. So we are going to get started and I'm going to show you just a little bit of this. I did choose on my initial sample. I chose to do it on a 12 by 24. Um, today, I'm gonna do it on a six by 12, which is the same dimensions. And I encourage you, if you do choose to get the kit, that you do, the kit will come with a six by 12 canvas, but you can take the line drawing and blow it up to any size you want. And um, the techniques are the same. I did think that um, you probably would not have wanted to watch me base coat. So I did base coat everything up. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mixes that I did. And I mixed, first mix that I did was a one-to-one -one mix and I mixed sap green and Hansy yellow. And that's one, no, it's not one-to-one, -one, it's three-to-one. Okay, so you have three sap green to one Hansy yellow. And the paints that we're using are produced by Deco Art and their traditions. I love their traditions line. If um, the kit does come with all the paint and you get um, one ounce bottles, so you have enough paint to paint this 10 times over. Okay, and I mixed all of my paints before I got started so that I didn't have to play with it. Okay, so this is the first mix and this is this mix is sap green to Hansy yellow, three to one. Then I took the mix and I mixed it. I took the mix and I mixed it, the mix two to one. Okay, so this is the mix and I mixed the mix two to one. Okay, and this is the second green mix. Okay, and that's warm white, two mixes to one warm white and you get your medium value green. This is your dark green, this is your medium value green. Then you take the second mix and you mix it one to one with warm white and mix, okay? So you take this mix and you split it off and you mix it one to one with warm white. What you're doing is you're taking this and you're just transitioning down from dark to light. And then your final light will be uh, warm white. I don't usually use titanium white. It's unusual for me. There are times 
when I do use it, but it is unusual for me to use warm white. Um, I really like to use, um, it's unusual for me to use titanium white. I use warm white. It's just a, it's warmer. Um, and titanium white is very white. It's, it tends to make things chalky. You'll lose much more of your brilliance and your color in my opinion. Okay, and over here on the pinks, we have alizarin crimson, permanent alizarin crimson. And then I mixed permanent alizarin crimson one-to-one -one with warm white. And then we have warm white. The other two colors that we're gonna be using are gonna be Prussian blue and burnt sienna. Okay. Um, I did take the mix and I mixed the mix with one part mix to four parts warm white. And that was the background color. Okay, so on here, okay, I have base coated this with medium, which is the first mix, second mix, and then the stem and the bud are base coat with the third mix of green, all right? The pink is just a medium value pink. So what you've got here is you've got medium and you've got medium light and you've got medium in the pink flower, okay? The background is medium, is uh, light, 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 all right? Now, if you look at the background of this, all right, because we're gonna do the background first, all right? The, the, the background is a textured type of background that we're gonna streak in some to give the appearance of some background stems, okay? But I'm gonna do it in warm white and I'm gonna use very transparent paint, all right? And we're gonna get started. The brushes that I'm gonna use are put out by Dynasty and they're black gold brushes, okay? They're a beautiful brush and I really love to use them. The liners that I'm gonna use is gonna be a I do. The liner that we're going to use is going to be a rigger. It's a faux squirrel rigger is the liner I'm going to use. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to take an, an eight. I want an eight. Black. All right, and some of my brushes are... No, do you want me? no we're going to take a 12. So we're going to go into water. I'm gonna go into warm white and I'm gonna blend it out on my palette, okay? Because I want it to be very transparent. And I'm gonna go into the background, just like that. All right. And it's very, very transparent. I want you to remember something about acrylics. And that is that acrylics are gonna dry an entire value darker. If I go over this, what I've already base coated, I'm not gonna worry about it because we're only getting started. When I was building this piece, I would have done the entire background before I, um, before I base coated, but I just thought that you wouldn't really wanna watch me base coat. So I went ahead and base coated it, okay? And like I said, we're gonna go over the background just like this. And we're gonna bring in these streaks. All right. This is Traditions by Deco Art, and it has a very long open time. Not like oils, but it has a much longer open time than other acrylics. Okay, and we're just gonna go in like that. And we're gonna just give it some texture into the background. If it gets too defined, okay, you're just gonna go in with some water and soften it out. Okay, it's really a hint. It's not supposed to look defined. It's supposed to look softened into the background. All right. And you're gonna use quite a bit of water 
and this warm white light touch. We're not trying to define anything here. We're just trying to give it an, a, some texture into the background and a soft appearance of some background foliage. I did choose to do it in white because I really wanted to keep it soft. All right. You can also go into a tiny bit of green. Okay, blend it out on your palette. Add some white to it. Just soften it out, streak it up. Little bit messy and that's okay. All right, when I transferred the background for the flower, I transferred it in dark graphite paper. I transferred it in black graphite paper. When I did the background, I transferred it in white and you can really just use a chalk pencil. And I don't think that this has to be really, really defined. So you could really transfer it. You could just do it freehand. Um, there will be some transfer lines if you choose to um, get the kit in the line drawing, okay? Your line drawing isn't intended to be anything more than a roadmap. It's your painting. If you wanna make changes, you need to make changes to it, okay? There we go. All right, and I'm gonna let that dry out. All right, just got a little, all right? And we're gonna get started. And the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna put in some darks. All right, I think that we'll do, um, we're gonna do the leaves first, all right? So remember I said that this was middle, middle value, this is medium light, this is medium. All right, so this is medium light, medium, this is medium light, and that's dark, excuse me. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make one little adjustment that I just noticed. And I'm gonna do it with me. The stem seemed to have gotten cut off. So we're gonna go back in and adjust that stem. And over the line a little bit. So we're gonna adjust there. Okay. So this is medium. So we're gonna go in to dark. I'm gonna blend it out on my palette and I'm gonna smush the paint around. I'm not gonna worry. I'm gonna come down against the stem. This is what we call a hard line. And we're gonna pull it up into the leaf, okay? These leaves have streaks in them. So we're going to um, not worry about making a solid float, solid smush, whatever you wanna call it. All right, so we're gonna then flip it around and clean my brush off. This part of the, of the um, tuber is on the top, okay? So that's gonna be lighter. So that means it's going to be shaded by the by um, this petal. This leaf over here is going to be shaded where it falls over the other one. All right, and you have a separation. 
All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down the side down the side of the leaf. This is the water side of my brush. We're gonna come down and we're gonna turn the brush a little bit and we're gonna blend it out. Just blend it out, walk it out. There we go. There's a fold in this, in this leaf. This is the water side of my brush. We're gonna go up against, this is a hard edge against this fold. And then we walk it out. Lightly touch off on, the, on your brush. And we're starting to get some form. This over here dried a little streaky because it's a nice paint. It's a highly pigmented paint. We can just blend it out, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we've got a little flip in this tuber over here. And we're gonna go into our dark and we're gonna put that flip in. There we go. Water side of my brush. Dark is up against that edge. It's a nice hard edge. All right. We're already starting to get a little bit of form in the leaves. This is the water side of my brush. I'm just gonna come up, lay the brush nice and flat. There we go. We got a little bit of form going on in there now. It's just the beginning. Now, if you make a mistake and you get something too dark, you just go back to your base color, which is your medium value, and you bring it back in, all right? And you can just walk them out. You don't want lines. You want to walk it out. Okay. All right. We're going to drop way down in brush size. Not that small. We're going to go down to an eight in our brush size. And we are going to go in this time to the medium colored paint. All right. And we're start going to just go down on the left side, okay, of the stem, and we're gonna give it a little bit of shading. And this is done with medium, okay? We base coated uh, the stem in medium light. A little soft. So I'm going to add a tiny touch of dark as I look at it. It's a little soft. So we're going to add a tiny touch of dark into there on that side. And we do want to bring some dark into the bottom of the stem. All right. We're going to go into the medium and we're going to do a separation in here where we separate this back. New growth which is much lighter than the developed growth leaf. Again, it's a little too light. We're gonna go into a little bit of dark. And we're gonna come down and shade that. We are gonna go into the dark on the stem. There we go. All right, I'm gonna just clean that up a little bit. On the chisel edge of my brush, I'm, I'm bringing some line work up on the chisel edge with some, giving it a little bit of texture. All right. Now, on this guy, first thing we're gonna do is go into the medium. This guy was base coated in medium light. So we're gonna start with medium. And we're gonna start to give them a little bit of form. 
Okay. You don't want this to get too light, too dark rather, but we do want it to have form. So I went into medium first, I'm going into dark next, and at the base, I am going to soften this out and go in to the base to really round it out, okay? We're going to let that dry now. Oh, there's a couple of spots that need a little help. I noticed, I there we go, down in here, and we're going to walk it out. Here we go. All right. There is one corner right here. I'm going to drop all the way down to a two. I'm going to go into my dark color. And this corner, you want to keep this corner right here, very dark, because that's going to give it depth. This leaf comes in behind, and it's good to make sure that we can see that because it's going to give it depth. Okay. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start on the tulip. All right. And there's a little bit of funky stuff that goes on in the tulip that we're going to do. We're going to go into the medium. No, we're not. We're going to go into the dark green. All right. And right in here, in the base, we're going to bring in some green. Now, green is a complement of red. All right. And it's going to make this extra dark right there. And it's going to be really, really pretty. All right. It's going to add some nice. It's a complement. So when you mix two complements together, you get a really beautiful dark. All right. And we're going to do that down here, too. And we're going to soften it up into the tulip. Same thing here. Soften it up into the tulip. Okay. Make sure you maintain your strokes with the growth. All right. All right, I'm going to let that dry nice and nice and dry. So I'm going to start to work on the back of the tulip while that dries. Here they are. I'm like, where do I have the brushes? Here they are. So right here. Okay, we're going to go into straight alizarin crimson. What is this? I, I eyeball it. And we're going to go into, this is a six. It's a six shader. All right, and I corner loaded it. And I'm just going to go into this V down in here to give it a nice shade. Okay. And then... Where this comes in, we're also going to give it a nice shade where it comes into the inside of that petal. This petal is behind. We're going to soften that out. We're not going to worry. Just remember, if you make a mistake, you just go backwards. All right, into the V. Flip the brush around. And this is a double, double dark. Soften it out into the tulip. There. Okay. This will start to make a lot more sense once we get rolling. All right. We're doing the darkest areas right now to help create the form. With it being acrylic, there's certain things that we want to dry before we go on. 
and it was really important for this green to dry. I just picked up a much larger brush. I went from a six to a 12 on these bigger petals. Okay, there we go. There, okay. Now this is dry. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna maintain the petal. This is the water side of my brush. We're gonna come down on the edge of the petal. We're coming across the bottom and up. And we're gonna keep the curvature of the two of the flower petal because that's gonna help create the form, okay? This is the first dark. We're gonna go back and forth quite a few times. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around so that you can see it well. And I'm gonna come in. This is the paint side of my brush. I'm gonna come in across the bottom and then come up on this inside. Again, across the bottom and then the edge of the other petal. And it looks really dark, but we've only just begun. We're gonna come in. This is the water side of my brush. My paint side is on the edge. We're gonna come in and we're gonna texture it up and keep the curve of the petal. And then this petal is right here and it comes down like this and it gets walked out. There we go. All right, the way this petal was, okay, some of this is about form, some of this is about the coloring on the petal. Okay, and you gotta remember that. It's much easier in acrylic to work from me medium value to dark and medium value to light rather than to work from light to dark or dark to light. I just find it that way. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna smush this in and blend it out. And I am creating texture because there was texture in the petal. All right, this is a little bit of a hard line. I'm gonna go in and soften out that line to make sure that it goes with the growth. Across the middle of this petal, we're gonna do something backwards, okay? Because with this petal curves out. So to get that curve, we're gonna go across the middle of the petal like this, which is against the growth, all right? And it's gonna get that curvature out. And then we're gonna soften that out with our brush, okay? And that's a lot of dark. Okay. We're gonna let that dry out. Okay. And we're gonna come down and we're gonna work on the leaves a little bit. We're gonna go in with our medium light. Okay, this is medium. No, nope, you can't see it. This is medium. This is medium light, okay? So we're gonna go into medium light. I'm gonna not worry about the amount of palettes that I'm using because if I mix green into the red, it's gonna get to be a little bit muddy. Okay, so we're gonna start to bring in the lights. The tips of these leaves have the tendency to be very light. It's also gonna help create the form and we're gonna come down and soften it out into the leaf, okay? With a much smaller brush, we're gonna use a six. Okay, and we're gonna do the edge of this flip. This is a small flip. So we don't, no, nope, way too much water. See, I don't get nervous. I just hit it with my paper towel and put some more paint on my brush. All right, and we're gonna come down like this and we're gonna soften it out. And we're gonna remember that the paint is gonna 
dry an entire value darker. We're not going to get nervous at this point about what it, um, if it's too light or too dark. Okay, we're going to let it dry. I'm streaking some streaks and texture into the leaf, and we want to maintain the growth. Okay. This section of the uh, petal, no, it's not a petal, it's a leaf. This section of the leaf is on top. This side is on top. So I'm going to take my six and I'm going to go in here like this. And I'm going to soften that out, bring it up on the curve, soften it out. All right. There. Okay. This one over here does have a highlight on the edge. So we're going to make sure that we put that highlight in. And we want a gradual movement on the leaf. They don't have abrupt movements. They curl and they flow. And that makes them really beautiful. Okay. We do have a little bit of light on this side that's part of the pigment in the leaf. And we're going to go ahead and put that in. All right. And up in here. Okay. Soften out those lines. So there's a gradual movement of paint. Okay. Now on the stem and on this, on the stem, okay, we're gonna go in to some alizarin crimson. And we're gonna keep this alizarin crimson very transparent, all right? See how light that is? And we're gonna go down and we're gonna lightly touch this alizarin crimson into the stem. I have to reload my brush because I put such little paint on my brush because I don't want it to have strong color, okay? It's like a very, 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 very light touch of color. Alizarin crimson on the stem. And if you look at the stems of the tulips, they're gonna have a hint of color from the tulip themselves. And these tulips are pink, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on the bud tool, on the bud stem, okay? We're gonna bring in some pink, all right? You can see that slight pink, okay? All right, we're gonna let that all sit and get happy. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna take this light green, excuse me. We're gonna add a tiny touch of warm white to it to make it an even lighter green. We are gonna go into the bud in a couple of spots on the edges and bring in this light. And there's a little bit of a fold right here. And we wanna put that in with that light. If you notice when I base coated, there's a little bit of pink coming out of the bud, which is there, all right? Now, what is this? This is a six. We're gonna go into a 10, okay? All right, and we're gonna start to highlight the tulip. And we're gonna start, we're gonna go in with our 10. We're gonna go into water. I'm gonna side load into medium value and side load into warm white. 
and I'm going to palette blend this to a light. I want to make sure that there's not too much water on my brush. And we're going to start to bring some dimension to this tulip. All right. And like I said before, I want you to remember that this is going to dry an entire value darker. Okay. I flipped my brush around. So in here and down here, and I keep the momentum of the form of the tulip. Okay. Then it goes like this. There's a highlight right there. This is all one petal. Okay, and we're going to connect it. All right. If some of, okay, we're going to go into straight warm white. This is the water side of my brush. I'm going to start this about a third of the way up and I'm going to go into straight warm white and I'm going to soften it out. It's only on the middle third of that section. Then right up the middle, some of this is pigment of the paint of the tulip, and some of it is form. You have to just go with the flow and paint what you see. And then this turns in and it turns in. Yeah. Okay. Do this again. Soften it in. I'm going to drop back down to a six. So you want the brush when you, you know, when you pick out your brush, you want the brush to fit in the area so that it fits really well in the area, but doesn't um, go over the area. This is the what paint side of my brush. I'm going to come in like this. And I'm going to just pull it down. All right. I'm going to go across here. And I'm going to pull it down. Okay. And we are just going to chill, come across here and pull it down, soften it out. It's warm white. I'm using a pretty small brush. I'm going to go across the top. Across the top of this petal. And across the top of this petal. And if you notice, I keep pulling it in the direction of the petal. It helps to create the form. I'm going to go back into a 10 because this is a very, these are both pretty large petals. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to work my way out. A little too much water. I 
There's a curvature in this petal and we wanna maintain that curvature. Blend it out, the chisel edge of your brush, you put it on across the top. Go across the top of the petal. And then I come down and this has a slight curve to it. I'm not gonna be afraid to come down. See, I have my pet, my brush is straight across. Flip my brush over. There we go. Up the middle, there is a pigment in the tulip that's very light. It's, it's gonna be almost white. There we go. I'm noticing that that's not white light enough right there. Blacking it out. Yeah, we are getting there. Then on this side, I'm gonna come down on this petal. I want this to have a hard edge and then I'm gonna soften it into the tulip. The curvature of the um, form is really important to maintain. There. All righty, this is the paint side. So we're gonna soften it out. Soften this out. And we're gonna let that dry at this point. We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna come down a little bit more on this middle one. There. And we're gonna go back into the leaves. We're gonna reinforce the darks. So we're gonna go into the dark. This is a 12. This is the water side of my brush. I'm gonna come in like this and I'm just gonna reinforce that dark. Make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush. Down the side, reinforce the dark. Walk it into the piece. Water side of my brush, I'm gonna reinforce the dark. Walk it in. go. Every time you do it, it's going to become more and more defined, refined. Um, and it's a this is a little bit of a refined piece. I'm going to go back in to this side, up the side, under this. Remember what I said about the texture of the Petal, it's not a petal, the texture of the leaf has some lines in it. This needs to be tucked under and one of those lights is making it flip. So I'm just gonna tuck it back under, okay? There we go. All righty. I'm going to go into my dark. I am going to go back in to the bud. Soften it out. 
Walk it out, blend it out. I'm gonna drop back down to a six again. I'm gonna do a little bit of dark on the outside of this bud. It needs a little bit more form than it has. There we go. Just a little tiny bit will make it go a long way. Now, if you notice, this got a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna take it back a step into middle and soften it out, okay? I can go into the light. Carefully. Okay. All righty. On this side, we are of the stem. I flipped it around. We're going to go into the green, the mix, the light green mix. And we're just going to gently tap in, just scooch, scooch it in. All right. Scooch in just a little bit of this light on this side. There. Yeah. Just a little bit, it's gonna give it a little more form. And then we're gonna go into the dark green. We're gonna go underneath here, okay? And come down on the left side. Okay? And we're gonna do that at the bottom also. And then we're gonna go in we're going to clean our brush off more ink. Otherwise, I will really contaminate our alizarin crimson. We're going to go into the alizarin crimson. And we are going to enhance that dark with a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is going to make it even darker. It's a complementary color. So it's gonna make it even darker when I put a little bit of alizarin crimson over the dark green. When we first put the alizarin crimson on, we used it as a very transparent coloring. Okay, now we're using it to shade, which is a little bit different. We're letting it be a little bit more intense. It's not quite as, quite, as transparent as it was before. Yeah, we don't want it to get too dark either. There we go. We are gonna do that on the bud stem also, but we're gonna be a little bit more careful, a little bit more transparent. And we're gonna go in there with the dark down the right side and then in with a, just a tiny bit of a lizard. Yeah, gives it a little bit more dark, okay? We're gonna develop this leaf a little bit more, this new leaf that's next to the bud. I'm gonna go in with the dark green. It is behind, so it is in shadow behind the bud. I'm using a six. I want to make sure that it doesn't go over. Okay. Now, on this flip right here, it's got really light on the outside. So we're gonna very carefully shade the outside of the flip. And you really need to do this on leaves. 
So we're gonna come down on the chisel edge of my brush, just like that. And that's a line. And that's not what I'm looking for. This is, um, I cleaned the brush off. I'm now gonna take it and use the full chisel of the brush and gently blend it out, okay? Just to blend it out just a little bit. And that's gonna help the curve. If it gets too blended out and you can't see the light, just go back and forth. It's the push and pull between the light and the dark, okay? And once again, I'm gonna reinforce the light on this side of the petal. Um, it's not a petal, I keep wanting to call it a petal. All right. I'm gonna bring some line work in on the chisel edge of my brush, all right, just to give it a little bit of texture, okay? I can bring some line work down on the tuber also, the tuber leaf. And I'm doing this very, very gently use a lot of pressure and you're gonna have, you wanna use the less pressure you have, the thinner the line's gonna be and the less obvious it's gonna be. This is gonna be something that you don't even, you're not even gonna notice, okay? I'm gonna go in with light, with warm white, blend it out on my palette. I'm gonna put a little bit of straight warm white in the tip of that leaf. And if it gets too light, I'll go back in to the medium light green, but I want that tip to be pretty light. And I want you to remember that it's gonna, it is going to dry an entire value darker to two. Okay, there we go. Look at those leaves, aren't they just gorgeous? All right, and right here on this side, we're going to do a little bit more work on this side of this tuber. It's not a tuber, it's a leaf. They are tuber flowers. That's why I keep calling them tubers. There we go. A little bit of line work. On the chisel edge of my brush is what I'm doing it with. Now, if you notice, see this right here? It went over into the dark, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently with this small brush, with this six, I'm gonna go into the dark and I'm not gonna fret and I'm just gonna fix it, okay? It's all better, there we go. All right, that's looking good. Now we're gonna do a little bit more work on the flower. I don't want the flower to get too dark yet. Okay, so I am gonna go in with some warm white and I'm going to, now there's too much green on my palette. If I start to use my palette with that much green on it um, and put it on the pink, it's gonna turn it brown. You don't want a brown tulip. Blend it out on my palette, okay? And we're going to, all right, this is the, I, I did side load it. This is the water side of my brush and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna soften it out into the petal. Flip the brush. This is the water side of my brush. This is the paint side. Flip it down and, and paint in the direction of the form. So we're painting this way, then we're turning it. It's like painting, okay? So that you paint in the direction of the form. You pull your strokes in the direction of the form. All right, that's much better.
goes like this, goes around and down. Oh, I got an itch. Back into my warm white. Blend it out on my palette. I don't want a ton of paint on my brush. And we're gonna soften this out just like this. There we go. Yeah. This middle part right here is very white and it's the color of the tulip. We wanna make sure we get that in and we wanna turn that stroke down in to the base of the petal. Again, we're gonna come in like this to that middle. This is also a uh, pigment in the petal. All right. Here we go. And we're gonna come in like this. Cross the top, follow the petal, so that you follow, you're following all of the flow of the petal. That's helping to create the form. All right, and into here. There we go. Very awesome. Right in here. There's a little bit of light. There we go. Okay. Okay, now we are going to add some very intense pigment in to the flower, okay? And we have to do this a little bit carefully. This is the water side of my brush. I'm gonna come in like this and come down. I'm gonna come up like this. Around this outside edge. I'm gonna flip the brush and soften it out. This is too, I'm gonna to go in with a little bit of middle value there because it just got to be too dramatic. It was too light and then dark. And then I'm gonna go back into the light, into warm white. So that it's a little bit more gradual. There we go, much better. All right. Bring it up into the top, make the turn. It's like a little S. All right, and that's going to be important for the form. Okay, we're going to let that one dry. It's not quite done. It needs, um, we can move on. We can do a little bit on this side. Right in here. Now, once again, I went over the edge. I want to clean that up while it's nice and wet and not worry about it. Okay. I'm going to drop down to a six. I'm going to side load. And I'm going to create this real dark in here. Turn it around.
Nailed that. Okay. Darks, we're reinforcing a little bit of the darks in here. And these are pretty small petals, so I am using the six and just softening it out up into the petal. Okay, soften it into the petal. Okay, okay. back to a 10. All right, we're gonna go into alizarin crimson. This is the water side of my brush. I don't want this to be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect in nature and it's not gonna look natural if it's perfect. With the water side of my brush, I'm going to come in like this and I'm going to come up. This is with a lizard and crimson. And I'm going to make sure that I pull my strokes the same way that the form flows. Okay. And I'm going to soften it out. I'm going to put a little bit of a dark one in there and I'm going to make sure I have the curve of the petal. All right. And it is appearing a little bit darker on the camera than it is. <clears throat> Right, and I'm, I am going to continue to reinforce this center. All right, we're almost ready to move right into finish. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in to, a, I'm going to let that dry out. I'm going to go into a little bit of burnt sienna. And I want you to see how far out I go with this. This is, again, a hint of color. And we're going to put a little bit of this here and a little bit of this here. And we can put some of it up in here and a little bit in here. Okay. Now I want to remind you that this is going to dry darker. I'm going to go back in and reinforce some of these whites that I have going on in here. Get a hint of burnt sienna in them, that's all right. This is a background. Yeah. We're looking for the suggestion of form. We're not looking for form. Just a hint of form here and there. We're at a point where we really want the background to be pretty much done as we move back in and do some of the finish.
Colors in the background are, very, are hints of color here and there. There's not a lot of color. Um, if it gets too busy, then it's going to take away from the flower. But by putting in some of this burnt sienna, we're stabilizing out the color a little bit and it's making it a lot more happy. Very light pressure on my brush. Yeah. We can go in and if you want to have a few areas that are going to have an intense or a green, I go into the light. I don't go into the dark. I don't go into the medium. I go in the light. It's going to be a little bit um, darker than what the background is now. And it'll add a little bit of intensity to the color. Everything is soft. It's suggestion of form. See this right here? It got a little bit too dark. So we're just going to go into some white. And we're not going to worry about it. And we're just going to touch it in and soften that out a little bit with some white. And we're not going to worry. Just enjoy your painting process. All right. And that's starting to really ha be happy. All right, we are going to very carefully go into a tiny bit of hint of alizarin crimson in the darker areas of the leaves. And this is done as a hint of color, very little pressure. All right, on the brush, you put a lot of pressure on the brush and it's gonna come out with intense color. And we really want just a tone of color here and there. All right. Okay, and we're gonna finish up the tulip now. All right, I am going to drop down to a six um, to do the finish on the tulip. But right now, we're going to finish with um, some alizarin crimson. Okay, I'm going to side load into the alizarin. All right. And I'm going to bring in a little bit. Yeah, and it's got a little bit of a curve to it and that's gonna help the petal curve. There we go. Little curve over here. It's gonna help the petal curve. The center of the middle, middle leaf. I have some real intense color. I'm going to go in on the chisel edge of my brush. I'm going to go into the medium. Okay, up that middle spot. I'm going to go back in with warm white on the chisel edge leaving some of the pink. There we go. Base. I am going to have some dark. There we go. I am <clears throat> going to go in with some warm white. To find that edge. I'm going to remember that it's going to, it's going to, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to dry an entire value darker. So 
soften this edge out right here. On the chisel edge, I'm going to do an edging on this petal. That is in the actual petal. Soften it out. And do the same thing on this main petal up here. You know, right below the tip of this, we want to break that so that it doesn't draw your eye too close to the whole, to that one spot. <clears throat> if you have one continuous line, it's going to break, you need to break that line a little bit. Otherwise, that's the first thing you're going to look at. And you really want to look at the whole painting and not just that one spot. So we don't want one continuous line going up the middle. OK, and that's good. And we are there. Um, the last thing we're going to do is a little tricky. All right. And we're going to go into Payne's Gray, all right? And we don't want to kill the flower, all right? So we're going to go into Payne's Gray. We're going to blend it out on our palette so that it's really blended, OK? And right here. We're going to put it in the areas that we need the petal to form, to turn. All right. And we need to bring this out so that it's very, 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 very soft. It's just a hint of color. We're going to bring it down in here. And we're going to bring it on the other side. Very light touch, very little bit of paint. Right. Very little bit of paint. Now, then we're going to go in to warm white. We're going to go on the edge and we're going to soften it out. And we want it's very little bit of paint. We're using very little paint at this point. So we blend it out so that it's just a hint of color. And when you look at it, you'd never even know it was there. Hmm. I'm going to bring a little bit into the bottom and a little bit into these darker areas too, to bring it throughout the piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, right here, we're gonna just come in with a little bit of white to soften that out. It's got to be a little too much below there. 
We are good. Little bit of a lizard and crimson. I'm just reinforcing the little bit of a lizard and crimson in the middle of this first petal. There we go. And it's beauteous. If the blue gets too intense for you and it get a little bit intense right here, I'll just go into a tiny touch of the middle value. There we go. And soften it right out. A little bit of touch up on the warm white. A little bit of curve. Blend it out. There. Okay. It's done. I'm calling it a day. Beautiful. It's one of those things that you could touch here and there for days. It's really important to be done though. there. So I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, I'll put when I put it up on uh, YouTube, let's see if I can, you can see me again. When I put it back up on you, when I put it up on YouTube, I'll also put a link so that you can have a link to the kit. And the kit will have all the paint you need, all the traditions, the surface, and it will have a, uh, written instructions. So I hope you enjoyed it and have a great, great day. And I hope to see you guys all soon. And remember, just happy, happy painting. All right.